Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markwe at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. Hello, this is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Marquis of Living Streams International bringing you matters of faith with Graphic Online. And this morning, I like to capture my thoughts with the words prejudicial preferences. Now, why am I saying this? I was saying this because of the story in, in, in the Bible about a king called Ahab and then a prophet called Micaiah. Now, the Bible said Ahab wanted to go to war and Ahab told, uh, invited Jehoshaphat Come fight with me. I, I need to go to war. And there are some people troubling me. I need to deal with them. And Jehoshaphat, out of reverence and out of respect for, not fear, out of respect for uh, Ahab said, look, I'm going to join the battle with you so that we can go and deal with these people who are uh, troubling uh, I mean, the, uh, me or you. So the king of Judah, the king of Judah joined Ahab, the king of Samaria. Uh, he joined Ahab to go, to go fight. And then the Bible said, as they were going on, the king of Judah then said to uh, Ahab, you know what? Why don't you call a prophet? You know, uh, please call, call a prophet. Eh? I, I'm not so sure um, about, so can we get the mind of God? And Ahab said, okay, I got 400 prophets. And all those prophets came and then they prophesied that go to war, go to war, go to war. But the snag in it, was that it was a deceptive move of God because he said, I'm going to deal with Ahab for all the things that he has committed. So it was a plan of God to deal with Ahab. And all those other people came and then they said, go to war. Then Jehoshaphat smelling a rat and uncomfortable with the, with the uh, drama and the histrionics that was going on with the, the other prophets said, are this all? Can I get somebody else? Says, oh, there is a man. His name is Micaiah. And uh, if I call him, as of that man, he said, he doesn't say nice things about me. He doesn't talk well about me. He doesn't say nice things about me. He, he disagrees with everything that I, I do or say. Now, then Joseph said, no, 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 don't. You bring him in. So Micaiah came in and then he prophesied the contrary. For prophesying the contrary, there was uproar, there was anger, some of the other prophets smote him, you know, and all those other things. Now listen to this. Ahab said, I don't want to listen to that prophet because he says otherwise. Now I, I'm, I'm, I'm scratching my head. For, for Ahab, a contrary view means rebellion and means rejection of him. So if I, if, 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 if I call him, and he becomes objective. I want to do this. And he says something contrary. Then he has, he has uh, rejected me or it is rebellion against me. This is the problem of leadership. This is the problem that sometimes objectivity is viewed as rebellion or rejection. So people do not see objectivity that it provides a platform for more information, for more light, for more revelation on the issue so that everybody will come to a better understanding of the issue and then we move forward. And there are sometimes people, when people are objective, we, we, we describe them as rebellious or we describe them as, as rejecting us. It is not rejection of you. It's not rejection of your authority. It's not rejection of your, of your post, your position. So guess what? You may be a president, you may be a pastor, you may be a head pastor, whatever it is. Objectivity in your system is no rebellion or it's no rejection of your authority or your personality or whatever you see. Sometimes it, pro it, it rather provides a platform for meaningful engagement, meaningful dialogue, so that the narrative of that particular issue will be a better one. And that's, and that's the challenge that we have. Objectivity is no rebellion. Objectivity is no rejection. If we can see it that way, you know, otherwise people around you would, would, would be yes sir, yes sir, yes sir people. And when you get that, you're in trouble because sometimes the king will go naked and nobody can tell the king that you're naked. And sometimes leadership is brought to a table to eat the bread of shame, not because of any other thing, but because objective people are chastised. Objective people 
are ostracized. Objective people are treated as if they are, they are nobodies, as if they are anathema or they, their presence is inimical to the progress of that particular leader. That's not true. Objectivity is no rebellion or rejection. Well, it is a choice as leaders we need to make. The choice is yours. See you later.